Hello and welcome to another video and today I'm just going to go over kind of a an advanced sort of thing to think about when you're playing in the Crucible and this is going to go towards my uh, guide to the Crucible series. This one's going to be more focused on using cover and analyzing the other players when in an engagement. So for this I'm using a new and beyond spree which I managed to hit and only really just because I managed to read what the other enemies were doing quite effectively. Now, I know this series has ended up just me being good with the no and beyond, but honestly, I find it's a fantastic weapon to use for these things just because I think about my my decision-making in-game more because it's a difficult weapon to use. That stuff's kind of more important for it to be effective. So uh, here we start off, I see that they are taking C, and I don't want them to take C, because the no and beyond, I prefer it to be in this kind of area. So make a peek and immediately take out this first guy. Now I notice I get a body hit, and he's shooting at me with an automatic weapon. If I stay out of cover, and then do my reload cancel, my aims is going to go all over the place because of him hitting me, so I try to throw off his aim by aiming, by diving into cover. This also gives me time to reload cancel, so I don't lose too much health. So I managed to get the first kill there, and immediately, without even thinking about what's happening next, I'm darting into cover. Just minimize the amount of time I am out in the open able to get shot, because I'm in red now. Pretty much one hit from any commonly used weapon will kill me to the head. Now. When I went back into cover, I just saw another player coming out. And even if I miss that, this bar on C is still rising, so there's somebody else there. Now, I'm on half shield right now, so engaging this guy who knows that I'm here, since I just fired across right next to him, he's probably looking at this spot. So me moving back out to where I shot Andre here would be a bad idea. So instead I move back and throw a grenade. This I try and bounce it off the tree to land straight to sea. It lands a little bit short, but the explosion will still block this view and it might hit him with a burn, that kind of thing. It's still really good to throw a grenade when you have it. I even occasionally just throw a throwing knife just to send a projectile over there so they take some kind of avoiding action and take their mind off aiming at a corner, but to watch the projectile to see what it do what it's doing. And this, I'm moving back to this rock, which is so I can use two pieces of cover. One to my right, and this rock in front of me to my left, I can use that one as well. Which gives me multiple options. And this is where I see this other person. He's just kind of stood there. He sees me, so he darts behind this tree. Now this tree is very important for cover in this area. I strongly recommend using it, since it's really awkward to shoot past it from the cave side. So it's a really good piece of cover to use. So now see this guy's gone behind the tree, the grenade's just exploding, so this kind of gives me time to get one shot out. I do a re-peek to see if he is peeking again, which he did, and I managed to take him out very quickly. So now my health is regenerating. When he saw me pass for the first time, he would have seen me on low health. So he would be thinking, right, this guy's easy to kill. So when we repeat, if I just wind it back a second, B. Right, just there. I saw his health bar, he saw mine. There was no doubt he, was, he wasn't aiming down sight. He was aiming down sight there. So right now he's going back out of cover to try and kill me. Because he sees me in the red and regenerating. So he thinks, right, he needs to kill me quickly to stop my health regenerating too much. But he also sees a bright red light of a sniper scope from this no land beyond. Now this makes him want to rush this kill. Because he knows if he spends too long, my health is going to get up high so much he won't be able to kill me in one shot. And if he takes too long, I'm going to take his head off. So, right now he's kind of panicking, he needs to rush this kill. And he just is unable to react in time because he's got all that going on. And it's a very easy kill for me. Now I just stopped them from taking C there. Here's me hoping that there's nobody else on it. And at this point now, I was alone for the first two kills. This teammate just spawned here, and I've got another one on his way to help. And now this gives me some backup, so not only can I use these rocks as cover, I can use my teammates as cover. So what I'm going to do now, instead of peeking this angle by this rock onto my left, which is a very good angle to use, 
I've already used it once in this fight and somebody else might have seen me. And also going down to my right wastes time so my health can regenerate more and also wastes time to allow my teammates to get here. So I dart down here and I immediately see the sniper scope. Chances are out of the multiple angles he's watching, he's not watching this particular one. But then again he might be so I need to get behind this tree as quickly as possible and get ready with my weapon to challenge him. Now I know this doesn't particularly apply to, uh, say, our last word, but with the changes coming with 2.0, longer range weapons like the Mitre Multitool, the Shuros, a Thorn still, was, is still the best weapon to use, well, will be the best weapon to use. And this kind of in and out of cover thing, because time to kill is going to really increase. It doesn't really on a lot of weapons, but it will since there's a lower stability, meaning people have to pace their shots more, so... Statistically, time to kill stays the same, but realistically it increases. So there'll be a lot of this diving in and out of cover once 2.0 arrives. This is, even though I'm using a no line beyond for this, it still applies to other weapons, like a minor multi-tool for example, which will be a very effective weapon once the patch hits. So you can still apply this sort of playstyle with the miter. But right now he's aiming at me with a sniper rifle. I can see that by the red light. And he can see that I've got a sniper rifle with my red light, and also the kill feed. Right here I do a little dart into the cover, but I'm fairly confident uh, confident that he won't be able to one-shot me to the body, since by the time I've repeat, my health will be around here-ish. It'll be up into the upper half of my shields, which means he won't be able to one-hit me to the body with most sniper rifles. So I'm comfortable challenging this and going for the shot. So I correct my view, dart slightly into cover then back out, this throws off his aim assist. If he is using a high impact sniper rifle, that means he's got a lot of aim assist. You know, the LDR, the longbow synthesis, the benevolence, they've all got high aim assists. So darting to the side really throws them off. And this gives me an advantage when making this shot. So my shot's low. I end up hitting him to the body. So I immediately go for a very fast repeat to find that there's somebody else here. I can see that by instantly another red light, so I am having to deal with another sniper. What I'm going to do for this fight is I'm going to have to correct my aim and shoot this person instead, since the other one darted for cover as soon as received a hit, as he should. So there's this one here, we each like kind of dart back and forth, and that causes me to miss my shot. Now, no matter if I hit or miss, I'm going to dart straight back into cover. I need to get back into cover as soon as possible, because I now know that there's at least two people with a sniper rifle down this range. I get into cover, and so at this point I look at my rate, I was like, where are my teammates, I'm running out of ammo, I'm facing two people, one's on half health, one's on full. I see my one of my teammates quite a bit forward, he's just off screen, and one behind me, probably behind the rock. So I think, okay, they're not really doing much to pull aggro, so they're still focused on me. And then I see him coming into the side, and we're going to double peek this, even though he's pointing the wrong way for reasons I don't understand. We're going to double peek this, which make any sniper looking down here have to make a choice of who to shoot at. This guy's new. I just missed two shots, pretty much. They don't know who he is, so that's going to really distract them. So I'm comfortable in taking this repeat. I'm off. I miss. That was a pre-fire. I knew how to make that shot quick. I decided where I was going to shoot before I peeked out. Made minimal as minimal as possible correction as I was peeked out which is why I ended up missing but a lot of the time it can work so now I'm here in cover and now's a good time to reload I got lucky on the mulligan so now I can keep at least one ammo in reserve to do the reload cancel but as I say that's a no and beyond thing you won't have to worry about that when using another weapon and I say even if time to kills are going to be lower on other weapons no and beyond a one hit kill like the miter, the still darting in and out of cover will still be more effective since you can go out of cover, get a hit on him, back in cover, he hits the cover. You go out of cover, hit him, back into cover, his fire rate's reset, he hits the cover. So you can keep doing this to kill opponents while avoiding damage. So again, this works regardless of what weapon you are going to be using. So now I'm going to reload. I know they're not close to C, this bar's still going down. Chances are they're not going to come through this side entrance. They're going to be on this back hill since that's where they all were. The people I've killed, which are the only people we've killed in this game, I think, are 
going to be spawning in A, so they'll be taking the shortest route, which happens to be down this hill. So I'm fairly confident I know where they are. So again, I do another quick pre-fire. I get really lucky here. Norm normally that shot would have just hit Jekron in the arm, thrown his aim off, and lowered his health. But I get lucky because Andre comes back from one of the earlier kills, sprinting into my bullet. So that gives me one kill. And see, as this shot is just registering, the bullet trail is still there. I am a good meter and a bit away from that bullet trail now. You have to be really quick on the in and out of cover. Now I am aiming, aiming in and out of sight, so that will pick up my speed. But I say, if you're using dance machines and a miter, you'll be just as quick. So now I'm going to go for a repeat. A bullet hit this tree as I was hitting cover, and another one flew past my ear now. So I know whoever I'm dealing with are uh, right now having to deal with recoil. So I'm fairly confident I can take this shot and I can take my time in it. And then I end up killing one guy. So let's go for another repeat. Let's do it extremely quickly. This guy isn't expecting an instant repeat. He, his teammate's just dead. That's going to distract him from a, a death scream that's just going off next to him. That's going to distract him. So now's a good opportunity to take this guy. He manages to get a shot off. I got lucky here because Strupus is now really pushed up and he's shooting him. So he's having to deal with kickback on his weapon since I think his health was, well his shield's about halfway down so he's taking fire from uh, my level 30 friend here. And that allowed me to grab my third kill. And then because I'm greedy I go for a fourth. Which he just fired at there. I don't know. I think he must have freaked out at the sight of my red lights. Like, okay, another sniper. He would have probably aimed out of his sight and then fired. You really don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the aim down sight accuracy bonus is applied when you pull the trigger. Otherwise, that happens. Your bullet goes up into the sky and near nobody. And that works both ways. Make sure if you're aiming for the first time, left trigger first, then right trigger. If you're going for the quick scope, or if you just see someone and you want to get into cover, make sure you pull the right trigger before you pull before you release the left trigger um, when going back into cover. And he might have hit me if he did it in the correct order, but to be honest, it didn't even look in the right direction. So I know that this guy was just missed. It's gone up into the sky. There's no longer a red light. I can take my time on this shot, and I get the hit, and that's quad feed. So there we are. We just just breaking down this short little uh, 30 second clip of how I've managed to get 6 kills with the no and beyond and so you won't get as many kills with like a Mitre or a Thorn or a Shiro's but just for that one kill you know every bullet is going to count when 2.0 hits there'll be a lot of bullets to kill people with the main weapons to be used 4 or 5 Thorn's still 3 but the range is dramatically nerfed on that and yeah, that's pretty much it. Just focus on your use of cover, make sure your exposure to the other players is kept to a minimum so they can't get a bead on you. Pre-fire around corners if you know that they're aiming at it so you don't have to spend time reacting to where they are and then aiming. Just choose where you're going to aim beforehand and then just do it as quickly as possible and then straight back into cover. Especially when using the No Line Beyond. If you're using, say, a minor multi-tool, you've got really effective uh, strafing capability, so you can just kind of strafe out of cover a little bit more. If you're using a Shuros, just don't let go of the trigger, just constantly firing. It's got a big enough clip size to kill somebody, so even if you just hit the cover, you're hiding behind, that's fine, just keep the fire rate up. And yeah, that pretty much ends it there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.